Steam locomotive design in the 1920s and 30s typically consisted of this, 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 and this. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, the state-owned Soviet railways was struggling to meet freight hauling demands. Soviet leader Joseph Stalin had embarked on several industrialization programs, but the railroads were still barely getting by with existing infrastructure. Instead of building new tracks to support more trains, some thought to just build bigger engines to pull more freight. Between 1930 and 31, 30 Soviet engineers toured the United States, seeking to improve their locomotives back home. It was in the U.S. they saw products of the American Locomotive Company and the Baldwin Locomotive Works. Among them were the last of Union Pacific's exclusive 412-2-9000 class engines, being assembled at Alco's Dunkirk shops. This must have struck a chord with the engineers as upon returning home, they quickly drew up a design even bigger than the 4122. Construction was sponsored by politician Andrei Andreev. Initially conceived as a 214-4, assembly began in Essen, Germany by Krupp. The unfinished locomotive was moved to the Voroshilovgrad locomotive factory, where it was given four pilot wheels instead. Introducing the AA-20, designed to haul heavy freight between Moscow and Donbass. AA stands for Andrei Andreev and 20 for 20 ton axle load. It had four pilot wheels, 14 63 inch driving wheels, and four trailing wheels, making it a 414 4. It produced 71,940 pounds of tractive effort. Engine and tender weighed in at 733,935 pounds and came in at a length of 110 feet. Lastly, the firebox was huge as the AA-20 would be burning low quality coal. Its overall appearance looks similar to the American 9000 class. It rolled out of the shops in December 1934, and it was a complete disaster. During test runs, it expanded the 5-foot track gauge, causing it to derail and fall between the rails. It also destroyed switches, couldn't fit in roundhouse stalls let alone on turntables, derailed often, and ripped apart couplers due to its power. The AA-20 also steamed poorly, as full pressure was basically impossible using low-grade coal in such a huge boiler. It managed to make one publicity trip to Moscow in 1935, but some changes were obviously needed. Derailments were caused by the extreme length and rigid 33-foot-long wheelbase. So, the center three drivers became blind. In other words, their wheel flanges were removed to better navigate curves. The first and seventh wheels also had lateral motion devices implemented to allow for more independent turning ability. These modifications were not very effective, and the AA-20 was soon sidelined and put into storage at the Sherbinka test facility. It was deemed a failure and quietly scrapped in 1960. All was not too doom and gloom, though. While the Soviet engineers' research trip to America resulted in one flop, they did develop a more successful 2102 freight engine and a 284 passenger locomotive based on American designs. Despite the AA-20's infamous performance, it did break some records. It had the largest number of coupled driving wheels and was the longest rigid frame locomotive in the world for a time. It was surpassed by the Pennsylvania Railroad's S1 in 1939, but the AA-20 still holds the record in Europe. In the end, the AA-20 was simply too big for its own good. It broke the tracks it ran on and was generally impractical. But that doesn't make it any less of an interesting piece of railroad history.